Oh yeah, baby. Yes! Woo! Yeah. Oh my goodness. Boys, today, we're not in Venice anymore. We're actually in the world famous Hurricane Hole in Grand Isle. And today we are doing something that's very, very out of character for a meathead such as myself. We are going overnight on a 92 Viking. The nicest boat that I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. The wonderful Nikki Bella from Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville guys, they were here for the weekend and they wanted uh they needed an extra hand and I just so happened to have an open schedule. And so here I am, you know, just trying to figure out the whole sporty life. This is a 2016 92 Viking. And I'm gonna give you guys a walkthrough of this beautiful vessel before we fish on it tomorrow. We're gonna leave tonight about six o'clock. We're gonna drive all night and then we're gonna marlin and tuna fish in the morning and catch whatever else wants to bite. So here we are. The cockpit. Beautiful teak. We got eight tuna tubes back here. So what we use for live bait for marlin is tuna, small tuna, bonita, blackfin, you can actually keep them alive inside these tubes. What you do is you put their nose straight down in here. And I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see it fine. There's a water, there was, there's a water pump that shoots it straight up the fish's gills. So the turnover on that is probably about 50% dying, but it allows you to keep baits alive for a pretty long amount of period of time. It's not like you can throw, you know, a, 10 pound blackfin into a live well. You have to do something different like this. So that's how we keep our live baits alive. We actually have tuna tubes on the Freemans that I run. We rarely use them just because we live bait tuna fish. Obviously these get a lot of miles on them because this, that's the main target for this boat. Alrighty, so I guess we'll start back and go forward. Got a tuna door right there. This is actually removable. We're about to rig some baits really fast beautiful fighting chair um, it can pivot all the way around so you can get a rod tip on that side or all the way over here they use longer rods so you can pivot that as much as you want sitting on that pivot right there right here this is super cool this is an in-deck ice machine so it comes out of that little hole right there here let me get the ice out Put it in front of the sensor so it doesn't think it's full so it can make some more in-deck ice machine very cool on the other side is the same hole space not an ice machine but an actual just fish fish box we got some ice in there right now you get the idea same dimensions um as you see we're kind of still getting things wrapped up we still got five hours until we're leaving so we're kind of taking a little break right now but i get to show you guys around under here again mirrored on the other side this is a freezer slash live well so you can make these freezers or you can use them as live balls. Pretty awesome idea. You got tackle stations, again, mirrored. There's one right here. There's another one right here. Just press and pull back. Boom, there's your tackle. You have storage underneath these seats that you can pull this up. You got put, we have mops and stuff in there. Um, storage underneath here both sides both have chilled coolers in here so you don't need ice got how many inches is this Kyle I think it's 24. 24 inches this is Kyle he's a full-time first mate on here 24 inch Garmin right there and here's the other side it's been really hot I definitely need to get a water Ooh. And you have another top deck lounge and another machine right here. So you can watch all the action, see what you're marking and stuff like that. There's also a drop down TV right here that you can actually hook up to the GPS and the sounder as well. More storage under here. I think if I missed anything down here. More storage under there, you get the idea. And uh, hopefully I can open this up later. Underneath the chair, there is a sea keeper, which is a very, very fast spinning gyro that stabilizes the boat. 
I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you, but it might show up later in this video. Very, very cool, very, very fancy, very expensive, but very, very good for fishing in this boat. Whole bunch of speakers. You got air conditioning for the back deck. Whenever we'll be fishing, I'm sure we'll have them on. It's gonna be a very still day tomorrow. So we'll have the AC rolling. And uh, yeah, that's your back deck, whole lot going on. Lots of hidden cool stuff. Yeah, but let's go inside the galley. Press the magic button. The door's open, kick off the shoes. Another magic button. But here he is, Captain Mark, how about that? Hey guys, how are you? <laughs> we are now inside the salon of the Nikki Bella. All this is tackle storage. This also lifts up for tackle storage right here. I was like, hey, look at that. There's a sword knife in there. Very nice. It's got a wine cooler. This TV, once you turn it off, it actually pops down into here. So you have a whole 360 degree view of the outside. Well, minus that. Beautiful dining room table, another TV, two ovens, a full kitchen with an ice machine. These are all coolers and freezers right here. All of these, this is all uh, refrigeration storage. Um, we have a beautiful Boston butt that with the wonderful chef Mark is making for us for dinner tonight. I've been smelling it all day. Very excited to eat that. So yeah, that's the salon. Got bar stools, beautiful bar stools. More storage right here. We actually have more refrigeration right over here more freezer space that's where the fun drinks go and uh let me think if i'm missing anything oh yeah this is kind of controls the whole inside of the boat it's like a this is like a universal kind of controls everything about right universal yeah any gps any tv any anything on anywhere inside the boat oh really that's really i didn't know you could do all that that's really cool very nice but yeah there you go that's the salon but we are going to go Work our way forward, starting with the day head, right here behind the TV, behind the kitchen. We have a server room that is also rod storage and a pantry right in here. And now we get to go to the beautiful state rooms. I'm gonna actually start all the way forward and end in the master. Also, I forgot to mention that the entire floor underneath all the rooms is a gigantic amount of storage. You can kind of see the little hatches right there. Forgot to mention that in the video. So here we go. This is the four peak stateroom. Has three beds, two, two twins and a full. It has its own shower and bathroom. Very beautiful. Own TV as well. We have another stateroom with two twins, storage, storage, it's on TV. Oh yeah, and all the staterooms have their own AC control unit. And this also has its own bathroom and shower. Here we have a queen size bed. Very, very beautiful. I mean, all these rooms are just beautiful pop-up TV and its own shower and bathroom oh big TV what's under here I'm afraid to look oh I guess there's just what could be a pop-up TV if so desired more storage oh yeah and all the obviously this is a boat there's lots of rocking this is how you get into these drawers so they don't swing open whenever you're rocking or you're plowing you push that pull it out and when you're done it latches you push it back in easy enough that's how all the doors without knobs are on this vessel in every single room and the kitchen all right moving forward by moving aft this is the captain's room i'm not going to show you that it also has its own shower and bathroom obviously a queen size bed here is the master it's got a full desk, lots of storage. That's a full walk-in closet. Whew. Beautiful king-size bed, big TV, couch with storage in it. 
and of course the master bathroom. With its own very large double head walk-in shower. Very, very beautiful. Beautifully, beautifully put together boat. Just obviously top of the line. I don't even want to know how much exp how expensive this boat is, but I mean, money well spent. This is just a, it's, it feels wrong fishing in this boat. It is so nice. It is so nice, but we get to do the wrong thing all the right ways tomorrow. I'm actually, I lied. I'm going to show you my room last. This is a laundry room, washer dryer, but also, wait a minute, there's Joe VT's bed. Little tiny bed for little Joe VT. I got my TV though. <laughs> so yeah, this is where I'm staying right now. Um, it's big enough. Um, I'm uh, honestly, I'm just, I feel like a Make-A-Wish kid. I'm just happy to be here. That's, I'll take any bed. I'll sleep on the ground outside. I'm just really, really happy to be here. Also, obviously more storage, drinks, etc. And this is where they store the annoying YouTubers whenever they need to go to timeout. More storage right here, obviously. But yeah, that is the main deck and the sleeping quarters in the wonderful Nikki Ballot. Hold on, before we get back to the video, I need to talk to you guys about something. It is really hard to eat healthy in Venice, Louisiana. Is it because there's no produce down here? Is it because there's only two restaurants and every single food option is fried? Is it because the closest grocery store is like an hour away? Yeah, it's all that, it's all of that. It's really hard to be healthy down here, but not anymore for me. Because I teamed up with Factor. Factor is a meal delivery service that delivers fresh, never frozen meals that are dietitian approved to your front door that are ready in two minutes. That's the big kicker. I get really tired after long streaks of fishing. I just wanna go home and eat and go to bed. And that usually involves me picking up some sort of fried item or a cheeseburger or something like that that is not very healthy. Factor also offers diet specific options. I chose the keto diet. My parents have been on keto for like a year and a half now and they look amazing. So genetically, probably a good idea for me. And I, I, I've kind of, Jump the gun on it. I'm eating sun-dried tomato chicken with spiralized zucchini noodles, uh, which I love. It's really good. Oh yeah, and also they do um, the pressed juice, cold pressed juices. This is pineapple, turmeric, and basil. Also very delicious. They have 34 plus meals that you can choose from weekly, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, and check this out. Like I said, I chose the keto stuff. I'm not sure how this is keto. Look at that. Loaded bacon shredded chicken, and it's 650 calories. I don't understand how that's that with loaded bacon sounds delicious and fortunately it's healthy so if you go to factor75.com or click the link below and use code jovt50 you will get 50 percent off of your first order that is correct let me repeat factor75.com or click the link below use code jovt50 50 percent off your first order and you will get all of these delicious fresh never frozen meals i would like to give a huge shout out to factor for getting my diet back on track now back to the video all right, we now go up the stairs from the salon up here to the main bridge. This is Mission Control right here. All right, beautiful fly bridge. All the bells and whistles when we're going out tonight, you're gonna to be able to see all of this in action, but I'm just gonna give a detailed walkthrough. Then you can see the bells and whistles when we get there. This is a very special screen though. This is in uh, uh, Qmar or Mark. This is a sonar dome. So what this screen does is it's a sonar dome that I'll show it to you later. It goes straight down and it scans horizontally. And we have these out in California when I was in the long range boats and you could ping the tunas and you could drive near them. However, technology has come so far now. The way this thing works is you can go to a rig, you can drive around it, you can see if there's no fish there. If you don't mark any fish, no fish there, on to the next one. Instead of wasting two hours fishing, you now know immediately if there's marlin there or not. But here's the crazy thing. You do mark a fish, you mark a marlin, a big one that you wanna try to get for a tournament or just to get something big on the line. You can select it on the screen and you can make the boat follow the marlin by itself. It autopilots itself to track the fish on its own. It is wild. It's a very expensive, but very, very, you know, it's, almost, it's, it's a necessity now to compete in these Marlin championships. But rest of the bridge, more screens, uh, more screens. These are the engine powers, radios, stereos here. Here's the, the Mac, what is it, the Mac? 
here's the sonar control right here. It actually has a whole um, like commission control board that's like a like a wireless computer it has a million buttons on it that uh, you can actually control through there. Searchlight controls, bow thruster controls. This controls that. This controls that. Uh, big giant seats up here, including the captain's chair. Obviously, I have storage underneath. Storage, pop up TV, more refrigeration up here. And here are the headsets. This is a big boat. And uh, instead of screaming at each other, the, the pretty much standard issue now for all these sport fishers is the crew wears the headset. So you can easily talk to each other and communicate better, especially when there's millions of dollars on the line when you're tournament fishing. But yeah, pretty much it. We got that on right now too. But yeah, this is mission control right here. I suppose we'll step back right here. To the back deck. You go down these stairs. Here's the mezzanine right there. You have another control station right here that if you're backing down right here it's very very easy to see or backing down on a fish really is what it's for you can use that or i'm about to show you in a second upstairs but yeah this is where all like the main rod storage is keeps them kind of out of the spray up and away from everything nice to have an option i hate a crowded cockpit it's nice to kind of have everything up here you do have to pass them down which can be annoying but is what it is very cool pilot station right here another seat more AC right here if need be more storage and we're gonna go up top to Ow. this station more GPS's more GPS's obviously station right here full lounge area with coolers as well and then a beautiful bow view this is where that he would be tomorrow if we do hook a big blue marlin this is where more than likely he will be with a bird's eye view and you can obviously see everything if you have spreaders out you have a really good view you can see super far and super well down on the water if you have a marlin come up at a teaser a marlin come up at a bait it's a whole lot easier to see from up here we are very very high up but yeah, this can all be enclosed if need be with this Isinglass style stuff. This just kind of keeps the wind off of the pilot, the captain's face while running. And uh, yeah, that's the, the main deck area of the beautiful 92 Viking that is the Nikki Bella. But now I'm gonna show you the underneath, show you the engine room. Oh yeah, and also I actually have one more bedroom to show you too. All right, so went from the bridge to the back deck of the pilot house. You go down these stairs back to the cockpit. Lean. And down all the stairs. Down in here to the engine room. It's a little noisy right here because I have all the shore power inverters going. here actually all the power control and here is actually two crew quarters rooms here's a bathroom for the crew quarters and see that right there I'm not gonna open it up yet so you can hear me talk that is the dome that drops down underneath the boat connects to that screen very cool attend the entry Oh yeah, we're not running, so I actually don't need these. But, better safe than sorry. Two beautiful engines. Air conditioning in here. Fans everywhere to keep everything cool. Cummins generator. Another Cummins generator. These right here are water makers. These things right here will 
do reverse osmosis and make fresh water while you are offshore or right now it's making fresh water in the harbor you are right here and it's connected to spot zero which then takes all of the impurities minerals salt anything out of the water and in this industry it's referred to as holy water because because it has no minerals or salt or anything it doesn't leave water marks so instead of spraying everything down and then shaming the whole boat you can just now let it you can now just let it dry up on itself and uh it makes life a whole lot easier here is the fuel tank level oh yeah that's another thing comment below if you have a guess for how much fuel this thing can carry oh you're probably wrong it is four thousand gallons of diesel fuel oh my goodness yeah well, here's the i don't even want to touch it but yeah the sonar dome it drops down through the deck right here there's another uh power board corner right here beautiful clean pristine engine room There you go. That was the full walkthrough. Oh, there's the TV right there. Getting ready to watch some college football. The Tennessee Volunteers, I hope, are going to whoop up on the evil, ugly Florida Gators tomorrow. We watch it down here while we're live baiting the Blue Marlins. While we're hooking fish, we're going to be watching some college football. Isn't that right, Cap? Yes, indeed. Yes. Last well, little... The owner of the boat likes Florida, not Tennessee. Yeah, I know. I'm in. So, I'm not in good company for tomorrow. I'm gonna have to be very, we just very sure subtle Joe, about. We want to make sure Joe makes it home. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm smart enough to see the Florida Gator pillows in the salon. But we're gonna go to the bow real quick, just cause it's a really big bow. They used to have a flats boat up here, but there's no really reason to lug it all the way around the Gulf. They do travel a lot. Home base for this boat is Destin, Florida. They've been in Grand Isle for two, three weeks. They go to Biloxi for a weeks at a time. They're gonna be in Venice actually right after this. So you might see me on this boat in a couple weeks or so. Um, where else do they go? Pretty much wherever billfish tournaments are. Venice, Grand Isle, um, Destin, Biloxi, Orange Beach. That's where they've been this year. Obviously it has plenty of range because it can hold 4,000 gallons of fuel. And, whoa, big gar. Oh, that's cool. That thing was like eight feet long, but has plenty of range. They actually take fuel bladders with them when they fish from like Destin and stuff like that for tournaments, because they'll actually go all the way from Destin, Florida to the west side of the Mississippi Delta and fish the Green Canyon, which is actually where we're gonna be fishing tomorrow. Oh, and it uh, burns a lot of fuel. So they have two 500 gallon fuel bladders that they put in the cockpit that they use to do those tournaments. It's a lot of running and they're fishing for multiple days at a time. That's what you need. Here is the anchor and the windlass. In here you have miscellaneous storage. If I can get it open. Hoses, more fish bags, stuff for the fuel bladders. Same thing kind of on the other side. Underneath me here is the chain locker. And more storage. That's where they keep all their lines. And another hose to spray down the bow. But, yep, that's all you got to see. Oh, you got your night vision, flare, and your spotlight, which is controllable from the helm station up there. But yeah, this thing is powered also with Starlink internet. It's unbelievably good. They, they have the premium internet. It's very, very expensive, but it's actually, you know, bad to the bone. If I needed to upload a video with my regular satellite internet, which is the cheapo Viasat, it would take me probably 12 hours to get a 30 minute video up. I actually was curious about the internet speed. I checked it and uh, it would be able to get like a 30 minute video up probably about an hour. That's pretty impressive for satellite internet. Satellite internet is, is not good, <laughs> but Starlink has figured something out. But gang, I gotta get ready. This boat obviously needs a little bit of touching up before we take off. So hopefully we see you while we are catching some big stuff tomorrow. As you 
just saw pulled away finally. A little bit of a late arrival on the flight, so we're leaving at dark. Uh, Captain obviously is not here. He's out on the flybridge, or the tuna tower rather, driving. But here's your view at night. Here you can actually see him right there. What are we doing, Cap? Yeah, and you get your engine room view. I actually messed up this is a sonar, but if I tech stuff, we got a nice little trot through some sketchy area. Bunch of cut off rigs and whatnot, so. so you can see him uh, adjusting the spotlight. You can see him adjusting the spotlight right there. Alright gang. Good morning. It's about 2.41. And uh, just pulled up to the rig. About to start jigging for some bait. Nice smooth easy ride out. I just drove for like two hours but about to start filling the tuna tubes here shortly. Alright obviously you can see you're catching bait. Pretty simple. Vertical jigs, teardrop jigs, flat balls, and uh, black pepper. We already got half our tubes full. Probably all gone. Oh, good start. We actually did see a blue marlin come up in the lights uh, pretty much right after we turned them on. So at least there's one marlin here. We got that going for us. Visual confirmation. So, let's see how it goes. Bonita. Here, keep them in the water real quick. I'll try to keep them in the water this time. Just a mean blackson. Yeah, a little bit more. Oh, slip. I got him. for breakfast. <coughs> All right. Ooh, awesome. Do we have any open? Yeah, eight. Eight. Beautiful. I'll do it, fish. Thank you. All right. So that was really good bait fishing. Uh, got all the tubes full. It's still uh, 4.15. We didn't start fishing for bait till about 3.45. So make quick work of it. Um, I'll explain kind of how that those baits end up on rod and reel control for Marlin. So it's actually kind of set up right now. Prepped, ready to go. 80 wide. Goes all the way out to the rigger on to this giant hook. This is 180 pound fluorocarbon. It's snelled on here with some chafing gear, crimped on to a swivel with about 30 feet of leader. This is a fancy deal right here. It's called a dart. This is called a dart. This will get pushed with a tool into the nose of the fish. So this will allow the fish to 
swim freely, but obviously be close enough to the bait to still be hooked. But yeah, it's a cool little deal. These are like ten dollars a piece, by the way. But spend money to make money. So here is actually a little piece of the Omni sonar. You can put it on the TV right here. Obviously, there's nothing on the screen. Um, this is the rig right there. So we're kind of marking the outskirts of it and whatever bait and probably just the main platform, but yeah, that's what that looks like. All right, sun's about to come up. We gonna get them? I'm gonna try. We gonna try. I have the whole dark system ready. I'll show you more of that when it's light, but we're gonna put some baits out and start fishing. Get to work. I think this is the biggest, one of the biggest. Flipped mm. upside down. This is a big one. Happy baits. I don't know if you can see it guys, but we're marking one on the screen. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. Beautiful morning on the Gulf of Mexico. After about two hours of tracking that one big fish, we actually found a couple big fish. They dove out, and so we started making a tour to the other surrounding rigs to look for more big fish. No success in the first two rigs. Got a bunch of porpoises in this one. Fun to look at, but uh, they make it unfishable. What they do is they'll eat our baits. And uh, they're smart enough to know where to bite on the bait. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. So they won't bite the hook. They'll bite the bait and rip it off. I'll wait for you to rip it off, really. And uh, they're just waiting for someone to show up and eat all their live baits. So this rig is currently unfishable so we're gonna move on to the next one okay just did a full tour of the Green Canyon we saw an amazing abundance of life here at the Kings Quay did the full tour of the Gulf and it was like blanket every rig but we're back here and we're immediately hooked up into what appears to be a yellowfin tuna so we're settling in right now we're gonna to try to hook some more then maybe hook a marlin here we saw a marlin here this morning we marked several of them so Looking up. Should have stayed here the whole time. I don't want to whack you. There you go, Mark. Short pumps, half cranks at a time.
little bit more. Okay, we're coming up. Come, oh, oh. oh, I need a longer gap. Skate him in, skate him in, skate him in, skate him in. Oh, get him. I hate fishing for fish. Be good, we got him. <laughs> I just pre bled him for you, you know? It's all about me quality. Straight down. Yeah. He's dead, but pretty much gushing blood. Yeah. A couple more cranks, couple more cranks, Mark. I need a couple more. Yep, come on. Yep. All right, boys and girls. <laughs> we made that about as complicated as possible, but we got a yellowfin tuna. There we go. Shots, no gut shots, perfect. Nice job, Kyle. Good job hooking that fish. Thank you, Kyle, for hooking. <laughs> There's the little pick, yeah. I'll take, I'll take a little skinny one. Look at that. Oh, oh yeah, nice skinny. Woo! Nice work. There you go. Oh, what a great fish to catch while not wearing shoes. Jeez. Hold on, hit him down. <laughs> One timed him. Despite it being a pretty slow fishing day, it was a really, really awesome day. An awesome experience fishing on such an amazing vessel. Can't be that bad on a 92 Viking with flat column motion. But we ended the night chunk fishing for tuna and something absolutely incredible happened. Yeah, it's good. It's good for right now. So 15. Yeah. All right. So, so we started or we ended our evening chunking and uh, caught a couple small blackfin on the jig, about the same size you saw this morning. And we hooked a blackfin that got eaten by a large yellowfin tuna underneath the boat. So here we are. I'd like to be able to get this uh, rod straight. 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 It's, got a, it's bent right now. Oh, for, for the for the. It's better in the like black that? magic, yes okay. sir. Yes sir. Here we go. Down and dirty. I know. I was looking down at it. Oh, he he he. You had a blackfin on, 100. percent He ate the blackfin. I saw him come up to it right underneath the boat. It's coming in really easy. I'm like, this is not. Oh no, it was 100 because because you saw you saw the rod tip. It was just like that. I saw the fish, but I didn't see me. How big do you think it might be? Uh, 120. Okay. One I, I, I can't say for sure. For He's over 100 pounds. How about that? It's a jumbo. Okay, I'm going to pull real quick and we're going to bump the drag up just a hair, okay? After he makes his run. Okay. He heard us. <laughs> I'm going to bump up the drag right again. Off the top of my knees and it was just hurting just a little bit. Okay. He's probably not going to like that. So I'd uh, lean back into him nice and easy. Lean and rock. Oh. No, he doesn't like that. No. Lean back, see if you can get get a half crank. Half cranks at a time. That's the name of the game. No, I can't move it at all. <laughs> lean back. You can lean back just a hair. And I'm fall over if I yep. don't catch you anymore. Yep, we got you. And okay. rock forward just a little bit. Oh, I can't move it. Just drop it a little bit quicker, but you got to make sure you turn the handle before you drop. Oh, there you go. All right. That's it. Got a piece on that time. There you go. Now you're whipping them out of girl, Kennedy. That's how you do it right there. Whooping that ass. Got this. That's it. Catch it, boy. You got this. Paying attention, Austin. Steady reel if you can, Kennedy. Steady reel. Giving you free line. 
Oh, he decided not to. <laughs> 30 minutes in. Digging ball. Beautiful evening on the Gulf of Mexico. circle. Give me cranks, Kennedy. Come on. Yep. Keep on bumping ahead. Nope, no, nope. Not risking it. Not risking it. We got him. Nope, no, no. Don't, don't dig for him. Don't dig for him. Got his ass. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, baby. Woo. Woo. Trying to get him over the side. Big one. Can okay, let's uh, slack? yeah, be like over no, you're doing great. Okay, yeah, put some, put it in free spool, free give spool? us some line. Yeah, lift your rod up, yes, sir. All right, choke down on it if you can. Oh, yeah, we can lift it in, we can uh, lift it in. What are you ready? Yeah, one, Four. two, three. Oh, yeah, baby, yes. Woo! <laughs> look perfect. Nice one, Joe. Hey, you hooked him. That was great. You hooked him. That was great. <laughs> Just like we drew it up. Yeah, exactly. All right. Woo! Add it to the hook collection. That's it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. In there, Mark. Let's get some pictures of you and her. There you go. What a fish. That's the culmination of a very, very hard fish day. But guys, we got some cleaning up to do. Man, what a cool day. Always glad to share it with you guys. I think we're going to get cleaned up. About to have some steaks and some baked potatoes. Got a long night ahead of us. We're gonna get back at the dock about 6 a.m. tomorrow. Man, what an awesome fish! Yes, sir. Yep. Oh yeah. All right. Good morning. We're actually entering this in a tournament. It's not gonna win the tournament. The Mongo tournament's a big long shootout, big in the Gulf. We're gonna, I mean, we're here and we're gonna weigh it. Might as well enter in the tournament, you know? Not the world famous. Yeah. Hurricane Hull. <laughs> no Kodak Black today? Not yet. You could at least offer to help, Kyle. I think you're doing great, Kyle. Sickle ball. All right, we're gonna cut them up and then get back to work because we got a lot of stuff to do today. All right, gang, 
Big tuna. 138.5. Beautiful fish. Long sickles. Gigantic cichlids. Here, check these out. I don't know if it's just me, but the cichlids on these fish, on this fish, seem pretty gigantic. I don't know. Whatever. Yellowfin tuna. Top one. Uh, nine inch sword knife. Flexi. Perfect for these larger fish like that. I've been doing, or I did all of my big fish from shelf season in uh, late winter, early spring with the seven inch. I got by, but really the nine inches, where is that? I believe. So I'm making a business. I, I'm making a business. I talk. <laughs> so I'm making a business decision and moving forward with the nine inch for the big fish. So what I did right there is cut on this side of the backbone. Pin bones? Is it pin bones or backbone? Lateral line. Lateral line, yeah. Well, there's a bunch of bones that stick up, cut on this side of those bones so I can separate this loin. The way you can kind of see that is this fin right here tucks in. You know, everything in these fish is built for speed. Tucks in, you kind of see this little ridge right here. And right above that is where those bones start. So that's where I cut. Go all the way through. Make sure you can hear all the way to the spine right there. And then these bigger fish, I like to kind of start right here. And then you got to keep your knife super steep because this right here is like really, really, really hard plate for where the dorsal sticks in. Like I said, these fish are speed demons. This whole fin right here, here, come here. This whole fin right here, it tucks all of the way into the fish. So it's like, you can pretty, it, yeah. These things are 100% built for speed. Just like that. But the plate on top of it is super hard. And um, I used to be terrible at cutting through them. But I just figured out if you keep your knife at a really, really steep angle, it makes it very, very easy. So don't go in like this when you're cutting it. Make sure you keep your knife dang near as flat as you possibly can. And this really hard bone will be really easy to cut through. Just like that. All right, and you, what I always do is I take a peek in here. I'm not a perfect person. Make sure that you're cutting right on top. Damn, I think I'm cutting. Let's redo that. So hold on, I gotta redo that going right here. So I take a peek in here and make sure I'm right on the bone. And then I cut all the way down here. Right to there. I did this last week too. Like, I can't fake anything. Um, which finger was it? I was filleting a swordfish right here. I don't know why I'm doing. Same I finger? Was, no, it was same hand. But like, I skinned myself. Like, I don't know what's gotten into me. Like, I'm not used to cutting with a nine inch, so I guess that's that, but I don't know. I'm talking and filming at the same time. Or maybe folks, Joe's getting old. I got a lot of white, white hairs coming in, so never know. Anyways, I need to pay attention more. Let's quit yapping my gab. But you can kind of see right here, we got the bone on this side, and we got the bone right there. So, I'll make this cut right here. Very easy with a very sharp knife. Also very easy to cut yourself. Would you believe that a dull knife is way more dangerous than a sharp knife? Unless your name is Joe Montron, in which case you're just in trouble. But make sure she's separated out. I think she's good. I think I'm overdoing it. Oh, here we go. Last little piece. Roll it over. That. Nah. Oops. Oh, got a little bit of tendon right there. Well, that, folks. What about 35 ish? Pound tuna loin looks like right here. You can see the dark shot hole right there. We'll cut around that, but we're gonna finish playing this beauty up and I'm gonna go seek medical attention really quick. We'll see you in the kitchen. <laughs> 
You gotta put them on the outside. The gotta... outside. Okay, so let's spray it with avocado oil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. <laughs> just spray the whole counter. <laughs> what? We are not in Venice anymore. I'm back with the wonderful. Hello. My name, Jamelin, on Instagram in Fort Myers. And we, well, me, it started with me in Grand Isle last week while I, we caught this insane fish. Uh, Hurricane Holes Restaurant has amazing wonton shell tuna tacos. We went to her favorite sushi place Origami. a couple nights ago, origami, and had sashimi tacos in similar style. And we're gonna recreate them tonight. I, I brought her 50 pounds, not 50, how about probably 35-ish pounds of beautiful vacuum sealed tuna and a couple of big giant swordfish steaks from that big swordfish I caught with JB a couple videos back. We had some last night, um, cooked at a restaurant with a bunch of her friends, and it was incredible. And oh, baby! We forgot the light was there. <laughs> we have a... <laughs> That's what you just said. We Don't forget that the light is on the refrigerator. Yeah, and we still have the tune in here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't forget anything, folks. We get, we're still trying to figure out the lighting situation in here. This LED on top of this oh, nice. makes it much better. Nice catch. No, we got to oh, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Well, at least I can get them laid out and then you can just yeah. do it. Yeah. So we're using this. It's actually working very good. I literally, I'm the... All right. Now we got better lighting. Again. Yeah. Hey, don't forget that this is on top of the refrigerator, honey. So... Let me show you how to do it real quick. We have these wonton. 350, you think? Probably, yeah. We have these wonton vegan wraps. I don't know why they're vegan. I guess they're just vegan. And you have to take a tin, not like this. But uh, here, let me show you real quick. You want it? So yeah. I saw this on the interwebs that the way you get these things to get taco shaped is you put them in between these, like this. Oh, you're so smart. Well, the internet's not smart, not me. So we're gonna try to fit. Oh more. yeah, that's great. There's another one down there too, if you need another one. Oh, I have really? like a bunch of those. Perfect. I think five or six will be plenty, huh? Do you think we should get more? Or? Yeah, I'm about to eat. Well, we have spring rolls too. She's making spring rolls as well. But do you think they'll get stuck together? We're gonna find out, honey. <laughs> good, good thing we have 50 of them. So we're gonna, put these in the oven until like they're nice and crispy. Uh, it's probably, you could fry them, I'm sure. I don't know how you would like keep them straight. You might have to like put them in like a taco tin thing or whatever, but yeah, we're just trying to make these little taco shapes. Pop them in the oven, we're gonna dice. So this is what we're gonna put, I almost did it again, honey, I swear to God. I almost put this back in the fridge. So we're going to dice this up into little cubes. We're going to wipe it off with paper towel you never, ever, ever put Water on tuna, that's rule number one with tuna. We're going to dice it up. Uh, we're gonna use that, what is that stuff again? We're just trying this stuff out. We actually have never tried it, but it just looked Mama nice. Fuku? Mama Fuku. Chili crunch? Yeah. I don't know, it looks good. I don't good. know, it looks good. And we're doing some ponzu sauce and some uh, sriracha. Still a nice national sriracha And then we shortage. got some. Oh yeah, we'll do some avocado as well. And um, both places also had uh, like coleslaw, not coleslaw, but just like an Asian spring mix. Cabbage. Yeah. So what we're going to do is all of that. I just explained, and then we are going to assemble it in front of your very eyes, but we have a little bit of work to do. So we'll see you in like probably 15, 20 minutes. All right, folks heading in the right direction. I'm going to pop these in. What time is it? 58. I don't know. We'll check on them every couple of minutes, but for that, the beautiful Miss Jamie is going to show us how to wrap a summer roll. These are not spring rolls, they're summer rolls. Yes, rice, paper, you mm -hmm. just dampen it a little bit, and then you do, you don't want to do a lot of each thing because then you're not going to be able to close it. Yeah. Um, tuna. Yellowfin tuna. This tuna is like really good. Yeah, fresh. 
little tuna, some cucumber. Cucumba? Cucumba? <laughs> Cucumba? Some free shavakadu. Free shavakadu, another vine reference. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna put ginger in this one. Ooh, yeah. I like this pickled ginger that you got. Big ginger girl. Yeah. Miss Jamie is. On every single bite. Yes. Oh. Oh. Jeez. Oh. Goodness. Goodness. All right. Now let's hope this isn't here. Just pick her up and roll. You gotta be super gentle. Gentle, gentle. Beautiful. Voila. All right. I had a girl. Did I? And then you dip them in your sauce, but they get a little bit like harder. they're super soft, soft right now. They get a little bit harder and not as sticky whenever they. Oh, nice. Find their form. Wonderful. Well, all right. We got the rolls rolling. We got our tuna all cubed up. Still looks beautiful, tastes beautiful. We've been taste testing. And we got these in the oven. And once those are done, it's gonna be eating time, honey. Yes. I think it's so cool how the rice paper looks before you get it wet. Yeah, it's like textured. Yeah, very nice. All right, keep it rolling. All right, six, seven minutes later, they're getting nice and hard and crispy. Very nice. All right, now we gotta stuff them. The time has come, folks. Time has come, the assembly. Okay, so, oh yeah. Difference from the hurricane hole versus the ones we had the other night. They had fried onions on top, which was a very good, you know, bonus texture and flavor. Um, the ones in hurricane hole were actually opposite of the ones that we had the other night in terms that the hurricane hole ones had the cabbage and stuff on the bottom and the tuna on top. And uh, also the tuna was, was, was tossed in the uh, uh, sauce that they had in hurricane hole. And it was just regular tuna at the actual sushi place. Both very, very good. Both uh, very similar. We're gonna try it out, honey. All right, you want me to start or you want to start? Yeah, I want to, I want to see you assemble this. Okay, beauty. all right. So I think what I'm going to do first is do... All right. Tuna first. I'm going to put a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This tuna is so good. Yeah. Fresh tuna is just All right, wild. and then I think I'm going to do some ginger, obviously. Oh, yeah, big ginger girl right here. And then... Uh, I didn't taste the sauce. Did you taste it? I did. It's good. Okay. It's got a lot is of it, kick. Is it spicy? Yeah, it's got some kick. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And then... Oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah, you're probably going to have to individually put them on. All right. And then some sauce. There's just a lot of kick. Sauce. So we mixed this. Sriracha. This. Anzu. And then... The, the stuff we other, showed earlier. Yeah. So I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna start kind of slow, I guess. I like spice, but not super mm. spicy. Take right. a bite. Take you a want, bite of that. Beer. Here, I want you to try mine. Oh, you mine really? Me. Yep, honey, you're so sweet. All right, here you go. Pass. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, all right, all right. Here we go. Wonderful uh, sashimi taco coming in hot. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? That was a perfect amount of sauce. Was it? Mm -hmm. Good. It's See, hot. that's why I didn't think we should have tossed it in there, I thought. I feel like it would have gotten soggy. Yeah. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> no messy. Oh, we really good. <laughs> All right, now, now you have to eat one. All right. All right, drizzle, drizzle. We added avocado. This one. In this one. Alright, I'm gonna go this way. Alright. Taco neck syndrome. 
beautiful. <laughs> you, need a, you need one of these, honey. Mm. Was it good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I like these wontons better than the taco shells. Yeah, they're really good. Mm-hmm. You got the, the restaurants we went to actually fried them. Uh, but obviously, this is a much healthier alternative. We, I want to try to figure out how to do it in the air fryer, though. But, mm, yeah, that that'll be so good. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try one of your spring rolls. Here, right. you get the camera back. Ooh, this one's got a lot of... They're all, like, sticky still. Is this first Yeah, one? they're fine if they're sticky. Right. Yep. Ooh. I would dip it in that. This? Or even in some ponds, just ponzu sauce. I'll just do it here. All right, spring roll. You like it? Yeah, it's like you said, it's like super what? like refreshing because mm -hmm. it's all cold and crunchy. That's super good, honey. Basically the rice paper just like holds the salad together so you mm -hmm. can eat it with your hands. I yeah. think that's why culturally they have rice paper, you mm -hmm. know? That's really good. Well, gang, pretty cool video. Really good food. Oh, very nice camera lady. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and enjoy the rest of this awesome food, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, more of the stuff to come. Also, memberships below. And love y'all, I'll see y'all next time. Say bye, Jamie. Bye, Jamie. <laughs> you always do that. <laughs>